No, this uneasiness is bigger, more diffuse, a tide of frustration at being so bowled over by a storefront facelift, a looming doubt about my decision to come back here. My eyes drift to the rear view, and I wince at the backseat evidence of my haphazard departure from L.A., my whole life from the last nine years shoved into two suitcases, a duffel bag, and four extra-large black garbage bags. It's a mess back there. It's a mess in here, I think, pressing my palms to my eyes, gusting out a heavy sigh. 2,700 miles on the road, and I'm not ruminating any less about what's happened to my life over the last month. The sort of slow motion reverse reinvention that's left me jobless and homeless and entirely without a plan for myself. Every five minutes, I hear a phantom chiming from my phone, the tone I have set specifically for Nadia, as if I'm expecting that any second now, she'll call to tell me her own sudden, shocking plans for changing her entire life giving up her hugely successful career, her hugely influential existence in L.A., her absolutely indispensable personal assistant, were a total mistake. This will be so good for you, Georgie, she'd said to me, as the movers had packed up the last of her things. You'll finally be able to do all the things you want to do. I'd smiled and nodded and made a check mark next to the primary bedroom entry on the moving list and tried desperately to ignore the terrifying blankness in my head at that phrase. All the things you want to do. I reached for my phone, too late remembering that I've already made more than a dozen pledges over the course of this cross-country drive to check it less, to stop treating it like it still needs to be super glued to my hand. There's only one message, and it's from Belle, a string of emojis that represent her excitement over my imminent arrival. Exploding celebration cone, heart eyes face, those two playboy bunny looking ladies standing in some kind of weird formation, a bunch of pink sparkle hearts. It's not the sort of frantic, can you do this immediately, type of text that's dominated my life over the last few years. But still, it's a good reminder. If there's one thing that's cut through the terrifying blankness problem, it's the prospect of spending time with Belle. I want that, at least. I take a deep breath, gathering my resolve. Get in, get Belle's favorite milkshake, get over to her new house, and start helping her with whatever she needs. You're good at that, I tell myself, unhooking my seatbelt. You're used to that. Before I get out, I drop my phone into the center console, removing the temptation and recommitting to this new plan, the only one that's made even a hair of sense since Nadia rode off into the sunset of her reinvention slash retirement.